Greetings all, Phil here, Stealth Drone Technologies, SC400 pilot, showing the latest tips and upgrades with my hulls, light kits. I have finished uh, two full hull designs with lights and also did a third in carbon, but I wanted to show you some of my tips and tricks and hopefully some of them will benefit you, show you some ease of use and things you can easily do to your drones without having to spend a bunch of bank and uh, enjoy what you do. All right. First, as you know, my personal favorite, the Drone Ace software. Uh, I say that. It's actually the DX8. The Drone Ace software is what I've recently been using to implement my videos because it works so well. They finally did the upgrade where it works with Drone 1 and Drone 2. So I also noticed the ease of access and coming on quicker is much better with the drone a software than the standard ar drone software so you might want to give that a try it uh is also easier and quicker to change the camera from up to bottom by just hitting a down arrow or a top arrow instead of bouncing back and forth on that ar drone screen to where the little circle is but anyway back to the hulls all right uh with the dx8 i'm able to control although i have them universally connected and they can fly together i won't be showing that now but do look forward to that coming soon. And here's the switch I commonly use that controls my lights. The DX8 effectively turns them on and off. And there you have it. Well, all lights active. Uh, I've been noticing, as I've stated, that the drones are fantastic flying units, as we know. But they inherently or characteristically really aren't made for flight at night. But with the downlight on them and the ability to see the ground better... I have found they will work with or without light, but they're very temperamental with the camera on. So in outdoor mode, or if you're fortunate enough to have a DX8 that has the option, they fly much different. I've noticed in some videos, people talking about inherent crashes occurring, getting too much angle. Believe it or not, that is the camera, downward camera compensating for a stop too quick throw it into a tilt too fast that puts it past 90 degrees that's causing the drone to go down. I noticed in the reply, some people already noticed that, so I didn't bother mentioning it or replying in those, but that pe most people understand that's what's occurring. So, okay, on the camo haul I've done, it's the standard one I've shown before, but I put a single spine down the middle. Now, and you've seen this before. Let me go ahead and shut it off to show it again. Uh, this is what I've posted on my other uh, information video. But on the small stein, spine down the back, I've noticed that some of the light strips by themselves are a little tacky. If you notice or look real close, I was able to put some carbon fiber vinyl over that. Makes it a little bit more attractive, makes it look more natural, and gives it more of a flat look than a gloss look. Now on the black hole that I finished, this one came out a lot better than expected. <sighs> Uh, since it had purple lights, I had to come up with some kind of little purple theme. So, uh, there you can see it there. I thought that was, uh, appropriate. The little, uh, spidey. I know, a little yuppie or a little current trendy, but whatever. Purple light, purple spider, looks cool. And, uh, this is also another future version I've put together of what might be a lightweight vertical multi-purpose drone with the i.e. drone intelligence agency <laughs> so and of course over here it's got the standard mark uh test version 2050 but on the lights on this one these are the more powerful of the two this one has the one that's stronger on the bottom super bright these high intensity high definition leds being so small they really are bright and brilliant and you'll notice that this one on the bottom is much brighter than the one I just showed you. That's the standard number on the other drone, the camo drone. And you'll also notice that these also now come in black, which before they were all white. But it makes such an incredible difference when flying. Actually, you can see the ground quite well and it creates an entire illuminated area. Now, these strips worked out real well because they're so thin and they do cut bend to the facet of the drone quite nice. And uh, 
I found also, as you saw I did on that one with the carbon fiber, I was able to do the same on this one. If I can get the light in there just right. I put the carbon fiber, there we go, along the strip of this one as well. That really enhanced it. It made it look a lot more attractive. Just some more simple tips you can do yourself that make the hole look a lot more custom than it may be. You know, so I, I notice I also used a little carbon fiber down the middle. And of course, you always still have your Streamlight Nano, the light I swear by, they're self powered. And uh, although this one is 10 lumen, the 28 lumen version is now available. But it's a little bigger and adds a few more grams of weight. As we know, weight can always be a factor in these things. Now, those are the lights I've used that easily and commonly, effectively, can handle all the various facets of the drone. However, I did try a standard kit as well. Uh, a lot of you might notice this strip of lights. That's the all-weather purpose. And you normally would see a bunch of stuff through them. But I've blackened them out so you don't see all the writing and circuitry below the plastic but I'll show you how this one came out came out pretty nice it's a pretty good looking job give me one second bear with me to uh, power that jewel up and we'll look at it on the carbon fiber hole and now the trick to this was this is some more common lighting you see out but much more difficult to mount because well, it's stronger, it's thicker, it doesn't bend as easy, although it's flexible. But with a little heat, aging it, getting it warm, and your hand like rubbing it before you put it on or put a little blow dryer on it, it does make it a little bit better. And this one in the blue over the carbon fiber did come out real nice. Now, I want to share another trick with you that's real important. I've been getting a lot of emails saying, hey, you know, Phil, how do you put all these on, get all these lights working and everything, and have all those bars on them because you've got your under light you've got obviously a y connector bridging your top lights or body lights how do you get all that in your hall without it causing it to be cramped or have a problem here's how i do that and it's what i recommend to everybody is you basically gut the inside of the hull now you say wow that must take a lot of time not really of course you cut the front out already that i have to do for my receiver that's on my drones but I have also found with a heat gun or even a cigarette lighter, you slowly and gently use it kind of like a tongue and let the flame just gently lick the whole inside of it down till it's totally gone. Now, one of the advantages of that versus just hacking it all out or cutting it out with uh, a razor or something is the simple fact that the foam is still in there. So as it heats and condenses, you still get the structural integrity of the foam all superheated into a smaller area, which makes the hull not get squirrely. Now you'll notice here in the front where it's thinnest, it flexes a little bit, but overall it still maintains its complete rigidity. So you haven't really lost any of the benefits or strengths of the hull by making room for your electronics to go in them. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and have uh, picked up some tips or tricks that I've been able to share with you that might make it more effective. I wanted to give you one more piece of information for those of you who are willing to do the research. These lights on the bottom, as difficult as they are to find, I will give you the diameter. They're 80 millimeter. They're very difficult to locate, but the size you're looking for is 80. And uh, I will be offering those soon as well, but, you know, only time can tell. So... Thanks so much for tuning in and checking it out. We'll now be known as Stealth Drone Technologies. We'll still be under SC400 Pilot for a while. But once again, thanks for checking everything out. Hope you found some tips that help. And don't forget my mentioning of the Drone Ace software. You'll see a video I just posted called uh, July 4th Vegas Dawn. That was using the Drone Ace software upgrade. Very effective, uh, easy to use. I highly recommend it for people that own Drone 1 and 2. And once again, thanks for tuning in. Have a great day, and keep the drones going. Adios.